empty chest by indira goswami mamuni raisam goswami about the author indira goswami also known by her pen name mamuni raisam goswami was a highly respected indian author academic and social activist goswami's works often explored themes related to the cultural social and political landscape of assam and northeast india she was deeply committed to addressing issues such as gender inequality ethnic conflict and social injustice through her writing throughout her prolific career goswami received numerous accolades and awards for her literary contributions including the sahitya academy award the janpeet award considered one of the highest literary honors in india and the padma shri one of india's highest civilian honors goswami's writing is characterized by its lyrical prose rich symbolism and nuanced exploration of complex themes her works often depict the struggles and aspirations of ordinary people against the backdrop of a rapidly changing society summary of the short story the empty chest the empty chest is based on a true story of a coffin found in a cremation ground the story was first published in an assamese magazine in the 90s the protagonist toradoi lives in a shack near a cremation ground one day she finds a blood stained empty chest lying on the ground on coming to know that it had carried the dead body of her lover sarubopa she retrieves it and takes it to her shack sarubopa was the son of a zamindar in whose house toradoi had worked and had died in an accident sarubopa and toradoi were in love with each other and he had vowed that he would marry her but he did not marry her and they get separated She decorates herself in whatever meager way she can and sleeps inside the empty chest in order to relive her moments of love with her lover until the reality dawns upon her. She comes to know through her policeman brother that Sarubopa was not faithful to her as she had thought he was and had planned to marry someone else. As a proof of this he shows her the invitation cards that had been printed for the occasion. When this reality breaks upon her she is stunned but she recovers in a few days and with the help of her two children she drags the empty chest outside and burns it down her husband is in jail for rash driving and in her absence a firewood vendor hajol has been pestering her to sleep with him promising to look after her two children earlier she would find invariably him standing outside her door fruitlessly waiting for her but when after the death of her love for sarubopa she comes out of her shack ready to do anything there is no habor waiting for her critical analysis of the short story the empty chest the empty chest portrays the death of the protagonist's love for the zamindar's son Toradoi works in the zamindar's house as a maid and she falls in love with his son. Her love for Sarubopa is intense and passionate and she had given herself to him completely. But there was family opposition to the marriage. Sarubopa was transferred to Upper Assam. All that happened some 12 years back. We are left to assume that she had married a driver who is now in jail for rash driving. Sarubopa's dead body is brought to the very crematorium on the fringe of which Toradoi now lives along with her two children. The point of the story is that even after separation from him and her own marriage, her love for Sarubopa has known no abatement. In fact, Her love for him has been a source of strength for her through all these years of adversity and has helped her to hold her own and survive. She is living with her children in abject poverty and they are half starved. However, faithful to him, she can rebuke the lusty advances of Habor, the firewood vendor, who promises a world of comfort. 
Her annoyance at the advances of Habor can be felt in her own words when she says, What is left in this body to keep drawing you here? The writer has very effectively contrasted the lust of Habor with the passionate and intense love of Toradoi for her lover. He would save the children from starvation. But she is loyal to Saru Bopa. The intensity of her attachment is also clear from the way she tries to relive the intimate moments of love that she had spent with her lover in his home by sleeping in the empty chest. Her love reaches to the level of frenzy. It's the empty chest's very existence gave strength to Toradoi. She ran her hands over the chest, caressing it. The bakul flowers, beautifully engraved on its sides, seemed real. She pressed her cheek to the flowers. Then, as on other days, she wriggled into the huge chest and lay there. We need to remember that she had put on her wedding blouse and had felt she was spending the night on the same bed with, he adored one. In other words, in spite of her marriage and two children Toradoi feels married to Saru Bopa. Her love and union with him seem real to her. It is as if she has achieved a kind of fulfillment in her love. The disillusionment comes when her brother shatters her make-believe world with the painful truth that Saru Bopa was ready to marry someone else and gives her proof of this in the form of wedding cards. This encounter between Toradoi and her policeman brother Someshwar as the principal focus and also the turning point in the story. Toradoi's personality undergoes a sea change after she realizes that she has spent all these years under the false belief that Saru Bopa's love for her was real and that he had stayed a bachelor only because he couldn't marry her. In other words, her love for the Zamindar's son has remained unrequited. When the truth dawns on her, she is rendered speechless. She is a shattered soul at the end of the story. But she recovers and realizes that life has to go on. The bulbuls on the hijol tree started chirping noisily. The sun rose above the Brahmaputra. Toradoi came out of her shack. She wore no chadar. Toradoi's life is no longer in a twilight zone. The sun has risen in her life to a new morning. She comes out of her shack to face a new life with new challenges. Her personal misery now takes a back seat. She is least bothered about her personal appearance. She wears no chadar now chadar being a symbol of respectability. Which means that she is ready to do anything to survive, even take to prostitution. The crowning irony is that Habor who earlier used to stand waiting for her is not there at his usual place. Her situation is truly desperate but her will to survive seems indefatigable. Narrative Technique One of the important elements to be noted while discussing narratives is the difference between the person who speaks and the person who sees. They may be the same person, though they need not be. Here the speaker is an omniscient third-person narrator. He is not a character in the story and stands outside the action of the story. We see things through his, her eyes. That is, he, she is the focalizer. He has the godlike capacity to look into the minds of all characters and knows what is happening in them. He could be called the narrator focalizer. However, though he stands outside the action of the story, he sees things from the point of Toradoi who is a very intense character. This is the source of the intensity that one finds in the story. The third person narrator focalizer is describing the scene outside Toradoi's shack in the morning. Toradoi is the character focalized here. But she is also the focalizer so far as Habor is concerned. We see Toradoi viewing Habor. The description of Hybers, spindly legs, and the image of his white teeth resembling, 
The chewed up remains of sugarcane sticks suggest the extent of her dislike of Habor and that he is of no use of her. As we said earlier, Toradoi is an intense character but the external narrator focalizer is no less intense. Note the following description. The bulbuls on the hijol tree started chirping noisily. The sun rose above the Brahmaputra. Wreaths of violet and brown clouds clung to it, making it look like the pinched and pale face of a hapless prostitute, blushing at the thought of having to spend time with an unwanted stranger. The clouds seem to lay bare the strange combination of helplessness and indomitable strength on this face. Here we have the narrator describing the scene after the death of love in Toradoi's life. The comparison suggested here is quite complex but the image of clouds looking like the pinched and pale face of a hapless prostitute blushing at the thought of having to spend time with an unwanted stranger vocalizes the feelings of Toradoi after her faith in the love of Saru Bopa proves illusory her helplessness and her indomitable strength. The comparison conveys a great deal about Toradoi's changed attitude in life. Style and Symbolism The writer writes in a very intense and cryptic style. Her language is very expressive of the situation depicted. Her smiles are very vivid and unconventional and say a great deal. This is how Habor the firewood vendor in the crematorium is described, his spindly legs stuck out from beneath his black shorts. His white teeth gleamed like the chewed up remains of sugarcane sticks. The comparison saves the writer from having to explain her dislike of Habor. Again, the poverty-stricken, Malnourished condition of Toradoi's children is portrayed vividly in the following expression their trousers hung loose like the hides of goats strung up in a butcher's shop. Note the image of violence in the above description. Such violent images are common in her stories. Another example of eloquent images is the following, the sun rose over the Brahmaputra. Wreaths of violet and brown clouds clung to it, making it look like the pinched and pale face of a hapless prostitute, blushing at the thought of having to spend time with an unwanted stranger. The suggestion is clear that Toradoi is not averse to the life of a prostitute anymore. But the irony is, her unwanted suitor is not around anymore. Many times, to convey an idea or a concept in a more effective way, the writer uses symbols in writings. A single symbol may convey a great deal. A short story writer has the limitation of working on a small canvas. She does not have the luxury of a novelist to narrate his story at length. Therefore, symbols can play an important role in short story writing. Goswami has made extensive use of symbols in her story. There is an immense variety in her symbols some are private and some are general. The inner psyche of the characters in her story has been effectively expressed through very powerful symbols drawn from various sources. The juxtaposition of the symbols of life and death in the form of a cremation ground and chattering of bulbuls right at the opening lines of the story is striking. Again, the Brahmaputra is a symbol of life. It is a traditional symbol of Assamese culture and society. It is intertwined with the Assamese society. Assam without Brahmaputra would probably have been a static society. Then another powerful symbol is the hijol tree in the story. It receives a special mention by the author not only at the beginning of the story, but at the end as well. It appears, as if this particular symbol drawn from nature is deliberately used to show the strength of Toradoi's character against all odds. Hijol is a strong tree which stands erect withstanding nature's ravages and symbolizes the unbending nature of Toradoi. Placed in front of Toradoi's shack, 
It may also be considered a witness to the travails of Toradoi's life. The central symbol of the story is the empty chest. The empty chest is primarily a symbol of death and is used to carry the dead. But though it has been put to use to carry Saru Bopa's body, it has also been used as a symbol of Toradoi's love, a symbol of matrimonial consummation, a symbol of fulfillment, a symbol of belongingness, a symbol of conjugal bliss. It is also a symbol of a life after death of love, which was very real to Toradoi. She ran her hands over the chest, caressing it. Vermilion and flowers, which is a symbol of union on the one hand and alienation on the other. The empty chest acquires another meaning at the end. After the disclosure of the reality about her lover, the big black chest lay with its mouth yawning open like the cavernous mouth of hell. The chest assumes the character of a monster that has its mouth open to devour thunks in this case it devours Toradoi's love. Characterization There are only three main characters in the story the protagonist Toradoi, her brother Someshwar the policeman and Habor the firewood vendor. However, Habor remains in the background most of the time. References to other characters like Toradoi's two sons are meant to give a touch of reality to the story. Nevertheless, a very important character, even in its absence is that of Saru Bopa, love for whom was the focal point in Toradoi's life. Although circumstances made her marry a man she did not love and bear his children, she remains honest in her heart for Saru Bopa. Even during her days of hardship, she prefers hunger to the advances of Habur. She feels loyal even to the wooden chest that carried the dead body of Saru Bopa. Snuggling into the chest she goes 10 years back when she was with Saru Bopa. She is so loyal to her first love that the knowledge of his death almost unsettles her. She is not bothered about the inquisitive eyes that peer into her shack, and decorating herself like a bride in whatever meager way she can, sleeps inside the chest stained with blood. The feeling is sublime for her. Yet, at the knowledge of Saru Bopa's imminent wedding, she crumples down like a pack of cards. The memory of her young love gave her character strength, but she feels betrayed now. Toradoi's character stands out in the story. In Toradoi, the author has created a very emotional and passionate woman who lives for love. The beauty of her character lies in living a life of purity and love against all odds. She prefers to live a life of poverty rather than accepting the lusty suggestions of Habur. He is not there when Toradoi really needed some support. Habor is presented as a lustful man who tries to prey upon Toradoi. Someshwar is a tough policeman with a morally conservative outlook. Yet, he is concerned about his younger sister. Sturdily built, with an imposing moustache, wearing a pair of huge ungainly boots and carrying a sizable stick, he is the perfect picture of an ordinary policeman. But, within that sturdy body, he has a soft heart. A strict policeman for lawbreakers, he cannot bear to see his sister suffer emotionally. He has to bring her down to reality. Habor is a man of lust waiting like a hawk to take advantage of the loneliness and poverty of Toradoi. With white teeth gleamed like the chewed up remains of sugarcane sticks he would wait outside Toradoi's shack and try to cajole her into sleeping with him in her husband's absence. But when she is awakened from her imaginary world of love, the man is not there to comfort her. Saru Bopa is a weak lover belonging to a zamindar family. He did not think much of taking advantage of the young girl who was working as a maid in his father's house and taking care of the ailing old man. 
He did not have the strength of character to stand against the society and marry the poor girl who had believed his promises of love to be gospel truth. The title of the story is suggestive as well as ironic. Like the empty chest, Toradoi's life is full of emptiness. In her younger days she was lured by empty hopes. Even in her marriage she had a worthless husband. In her later days also whatever hope she had faded away in the vast emptiness of misfortune. To Toradoi, before her disillusionment, it was a precious object that she had salvaged from the ruins of her love. It meant a reminder of her love for Sarubopa. Afterwards it is really empty empty not only in a physical sense but also emotionally because it is empty of love. And she burns it in with it all her empty hopes.